want to, I will. Holiday hoops coming up in Pittsburgh, PA. The early Christmas present the students are hoping for is an end to the Panthers' two-game losing streak. Number seven, Pitt, needs a win to stay in the top ten. But Dayton is flying, having won eight games in a row. It's Dayton at Pitt, and it's next. On the eve of Christmas Eve, it's a matchup of the Atlantic 10 and the Big East. The Dayton Flyers 10 and 1. The Panthers of Pitt are 10 and 2. They have lost two in a row, and we welcome you to our coverage. Merry Christmas from the Peterson Event Center. I'm John Sanders along with Perry Clark. And I tell you what, the way Dayton's playing, they could lead Santa's sleigh tomorrow night because they are really flying high. They are playing extremely well right now. They're really paced by some tremendous shooting by Brian Roberts. He stretches the defense. He can knock it down and transition from the three. But the thing he can do in the half court, he can come off the ball screens and really make you pay. And this Dayton team is really playing well right now. He's very well balanced. Of course, he was a two guard when he started out at Dayton, but he's averaging 17 points a game. He also handles the offense, leading the team in assists, and one of the players who averages about five rebounds a game. So they're pretty well balanced. Of course, the balance for Pitt starts right in the middle with Aaron Gray. Well, every scouting report starts with Aaron Gray. How are you going to play him? He does a great job. He catches the ball so well in traffic and can finish. He also is very, very tough around the glass. you got to keep him out. But the best thing is in the half court, you can throw him the ball. He can handle the double team and still finish. And he's having great numbers again this year. And for the second year in a row, he is averaging better than a double-double per game. So he is going to be a load for the Flyers to handle. But he's got some help. A newcomer, Mike Cook. Mike Cook has really stepped up and really helped Pitt. He can score in around the basket. He also has the ability to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. But the biggest thing, he can stretch the defense by knocking down the perimeter jump shot. Makes him awful difficult to guard. You look at his numbers, the second leading scorer on the team, and he is shooting at 56%. A lot of those shots coming from outside, so certainly he has been a factor. It's going to be a terrific matchup here tonight. We've got the Flyers of the University of Dayton against the Panthers of the University of Pittsburgh. Starting lineups, opening tip, straight ahead. America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. And by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. The Panthers very happy to be back home in the Peterson Center. They completed a three-game road trip and lost two of those three. Could have lost all three. Buffalo took them to the wire, and they pulled that one out. Let's check out the starting lineups for this matchup tonight. From Pittsburgh, PA, it'll be Roberts, Johnson, Scott, Little, and Heilsman, a couple of freshmen in that lineup for the Flyers of Dayton. For the Panthers, a veteran lineup, Fields, Graves, Cook, Kendall, and Aaron Gray, the big man in the middle. We focused on Roberts and Gray during our open. We'll keep an eye on them during the course of this game tonight. Head coach, fourth season, is Brian Gregory. Of course, a longtime assistant coach, very successfully at Michigan State. Well, one of the things you know about uh, coaches from Michigan State, they're very, very well prepared, and their kids will have a lot of offensive sets, John. And Jamie Dixon has had almost unprecedented success. Matter of fact, the two losses, first losses he's ever had in the month of December as head coach at Pitt. Well, you know you have a lot of security when you can go on the road in December like Jamie's done. He's done a tremendous job of building this program. All right, we have the opening tip coming up. Jamie Dixon also in his fourth season. Our referee tonight is Jamie Lucky. Tom Lopes and Ed Corbett are the umpires, and we're set to start the action, we're underway. A quick jump and the tip goes into the hands of their leader. They call him B-Rob, Ryan Roberts. Scott with it down the lane with a runner off the glass, bending out, follow no good, and into the hands of Aaron Gray. One of the things that's hurt Pitt is keeping people off the glass. They have not rebounded like most of the Pitt teams in the past, and there you saw Dayton get an offensive rebound early. Now, there's been some criticism locally of their defense as well, but I don't think you can question that for the most part. They dump it inside. Gray has it knocked out of bounds. The Panthers will keep it with 16 on the shot clock. Take a look at our star watch for the game tonight. We're inside the first minute of play. Heilsman is the freshman, and Gray the veteran. They're the big guys we'll be watching inside. Size advantage, obviously, uh, goes to the Panthers. There's a three that comes up short. There's Gray with a foul. He misses at point-blank range. 
Loose ball out of bounds, and a foul is on Aaron Gray, I believe. Yeah, it is. Houghton has a really tough job of keeping Gray off the glass. He just physically, Gray is so strong. They see him miss right there in close, and they call a foul right there. But I think the key thing, John, is seeing the way Pitt starts off this game. In this building, they've been known to knock people out early, and they have not done that when they were on the road. It's interesting to see how, coming home, how they settle in. Now, believe me, Brian Gregory is worried about that. He said, we've got to survive the shock of the first six minutes of the game. Heisman is outside on the drive. Johnson gives it up. Now Roberts pulls up for his jumper. Too strong. Skips into the hands of Fields. He'll run back for Pittsburgh. All the way in. Puts it up and in. What a shot by Fields. Tremendous transition. One of the things that Coach Gregory said he has to keep Pitt out of transition. And there you see why. This is Monty Scott, the only senior on the team. The freshman, Hillsman, gets in the lane, puts up a short jumper, and hits it. That was a very impressive move by the young freshman that time as they really cleared the side and let him go one on one against Gray. Well, he is not scoring much, less than four a game, but they say he's getting a little more confidence in that offense, and as he does, he's going to score more. Kendall has it. It's interesting to see the way teams play Gray because of the fact he passes the ball so well. You know, when you throw it in there to him, do you double down? Do you let him go one-on-one -on -one and try to contain the other people? It'll be interesting to see the way Dayton plays him tonight. Fields being bumped by Roberts. Shot clock inside five. Baseline, now three from outside for Fields. He hit the big one at the end of regulation to send that game at Oklahoma State into overtime. Well, this Pittsburgh team really does a great job of sharing the basketball. They really play well with each other. Roberts will settle his offense down in half court. Look for the ball screens. They like to get Roberts coming off the ball screens as the offensive foul was called on that, but that's part of what they like to do to get him to the basket. Now, Hillsman picks up his first foul, so each of the big men have one foul. There's the blocking foul as he moved his body out to try to pick him off. He was leaning a little bit, but they're going to try to do some things to allow Roberts to get into the lane and, and to be able to either score or get the ball to Scott and get him involved. Sandoval is the first sub for the Flyers. A transfer originally from Richmond and also spent some time in a junior college. He wears number three and he's on the court right now. And he's a veteran player. He played on the Richmond team that beat Kansas, so he's been in big games before. Beautiful move inside along the baseline by Antonio Graves. Well, the Panthers open up a five-point lead. And this is the type of start I'm sure Jamie Dixon wanted to see out of his ball club. And Roberts will control the ball most of the time. He will, and Dayton is very patient. You know, they, they don't really shoot a lot of threes. They go for high percentages. They like the dribble penetration and penetrate and pitch and set each other up with good spacing. Baseline move there. Kick it back for Sandoval, who goes up and travels. Second turnover for the Flyers. Panthers leading by five. This pit, this pit defense looks pretty good tonight, John. They, they you see that uh, the space in Dayton is trying to do right there so they can get the penetration. You penetrate and try to create the open jump shot by your spacing. At that time, the Panthers were there defensively on that jump shot. Excellent rotation by Pittsburgh. Here's Cook. Backs away. Now starts his move down the lane. Has a knocked out of his hands. The turnover for Pitt. And that one is lost. Fields comes up with it. Puts up a floater and hits it. Oh, he's got seven early points and a couple of unbelievable he shots. He really does. And the Pittsburgh guards have had a history of making you pay from, from Knight to Krauser and now with Fields. If you make a mistake against the Pittsburgh guards, you're going to wind up costing the team. Comes a move by the senior Monty Scott, the only senior on this team for the Flyers from the Atlantic 10. Off to their best start since the first year that Brian Gregor was there. They opened at 10 and 1. Shot clock winding down to 5. Again, Dayton's trying to do a lot off the dribble. Well, Roberts just drills a 3 and beats the buzzer. He's a 43% three point shooter and he hits a trade. John, he is a really big time shooter. Jamie Dixon told me before the game that they recruited him some. They're very, very fit for him getting going. Underneath in the jam. 
you saw him right there. They just isolated Gray and went over the top. And Dayton's just not big enough to be able to help with that unless they get some weak side help. You see what they do? They just clear out the weak side, go over the top, and isolate him, and he can finish. It looks like this Pittsburgh team is really concentrating on getting Gray's hit his touches, even more so than they did last year. Well, he was the most improved player in the league last year, and his coach thinks he could be the most improved player in the <laughs> league again this year. Not only that, the preseason pick is the player of the year. Well, and, and I think the thing that makes him so tough is his ability to pass the basketball. He has a really good basketball IQ, and so therefore you just can't give him a steady diet of any one defense because he can read it and recognize it and destroy it. Well, right now, Jimmy Binney has checked into the lineup, a junior from Johnston, Iowa. He's out there with Andre Sandoval. And there you see the shooting percentages. Panthers have the better of it so far. But this is kind of what was expected by Brian Gregory. He said, we know we're going to get a pretty good jolt, especially physically early in the ballgame. Exactly. But this Dayton team has a lot of resilience. They're running some staggers right now, I think, just to try to settle them down. They started off by trying to do a lot of penetrating the pitch, and now they're trying to run some staggers. Here's Roberts another three and he is on target tonight. He's two for two six early points for the sharpshooter the leading scorer for his club. You can't leave him but what they do is they give you a lot of motion so whoever Gordon Roberts is looking to try to help on some of the penetration instead of staying at home. So how do you get a combination on that. <laughs> you can't that's why it's good <laughs> offense John. Inside move by Kendall stripped with the ball and the Flyers come up with it. And a foul is going to go on Levon Kendall. That'll be his first. And so one foul each on Kendall and Gray, the big man for Pitt. Panthers have the early lead here at home. After three straight on the road, they're up by three early. January 2nd when the Panthers have an early three point lead thanks in no small part to the play of number two Levance Fields. He's been outstanding in the early going. Oh without question he's been the man. You see him there with the penetration. He's really done a good job of attacking the basket and he bring he brought some energy early for this Pittsburgh team again. You see him attacking, sucking up the double team, and then kicking down the jump shot. He right now is the leader on this Pittsburgh team offensively. But if I'm Brian Gregory for Dayton, I think that's a good thing because right now I'm telling my team if we can stop fields, the rest of these guys aren't really hurting us that bad. We can settle in and we can get right back in this thing. And Ramon is checking in the lineup along with Sam Young. And Young has been bothered much of the year by injuries to his knees and back check out you know one of the things Jamie Dixon was concerned about was you know you come off the road it's Christmas time you're home the team having a letdown and I think it's really important John for this Pittsburgh team for other people to get involved early in this game for Pittsburgh to have some success tonight and he turned it over palmed the ball you don't see him called very often but it was called right there 11 to 8 is our score the Friars have turned it over four times so far. They played on Wednesday. The Panthers played on Thursday. A very physical double overtime loss in Oklahoma City in what was a considered a neutral site, but it was hardly hardly neutral. Well, and it was also a very physical and very an emotional game. Now, the one thing in talking to the coaches is a baseline drive to get it out to Biggs, reverse to Ramon for three on the way. Go. That's the thing that Pittsburgh is looking to do. They really do a really great job of sharing the basketball. John, this team for this time of the year really, un Pittsburgh understands what they have to do to win and how they want to play. And we have a team that can do that and has that kind of maturity. They recognize game situations pretty well. And the answer and the three-pointer comes from the freshman, Marcus Johnson. Both he and Brian Roberts. Uh, we're disciplined. We're not allowed to start the game against Holy Cross, one of the victories, because they were late, a little bit late for a shootaround. So the punishment was to not start the game. 
and, and, and that's a good thing for a coach. It, it's important in December that you set the tone of how you're going to handle your team for the rest of the year. And so that, that really works. But, you know, Johnson is really a, a very, very good shooter. And as a freshman, he stepped up and he's really made a huge difference. You know, Dayton lost some key components last year, but the freshmen have really made up for that. Just a Flyers' second road trip of the year. Their only other road trip was to SMU, and they lost that game. Their only loss of the season. Young outside had one of his better games against Oklahoma State. Gets it back to Ramon on the drive. Benjamin for three. Too strong. Rebound ripped loose. Little tried to save it. Was out of bounds. Both teams understand how important the glass work will be, and I think you're going to see a lot of competition on the glass because I think Dayton thinks that they can come in here and, and rebound with Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh historically has been a dominant team in the Big East on the glass. Well, it's a balanced team for Dayton in terms of all five guys going to the glass. We saw them work on that in the shoot around. Everybody goes to the boards when the shot goes up. Now Ramon is outside. Didn't play that much in the Oklahoma State game. And I asked Coach about that. That just kind of was matching up with what Oklahoma State was doing, and they said he was definitely going to play a lot more tonight. Ramon to the baseline. Out of bounds. Third turnover for Pitt. Well, this will give you a taste of what your the last two games, and going back to the comment I made about the coaches, that this is the kind of games against Wisconsin, Oklahoma State, that'll get you ready for the Big East in a hurry. Oh, without question, and especially your RPI. I mean, Jamie Dixon believes that at the end of the day, Pittsburgh is going to be in the top five in RPI as far as strength of schedule, both with the Big East and with their non-conference schedule. Well, they were number six coming into this week, and all they did was go down and play Oklahoma State <laughs> in Oklahoma City. But you got to have a pretty good contract, John, to take those games on this early. But a lot of these coaches are doing that, and certainly Jamie is now starting to put his fingerprints. This is his program, and he's doing a tremendous job. Yeah, when I was talking to Brian Gregory, I said, now, wait a minute. Here it is on the 23rd. You're playing at Pitt. Then on the 31st, you play at North Carolina. What's the deal with that? I tell you what, th that that's a tough two-game two stretch. But Brian Gregory is certainly one of the finest young coaches coming along. And, you know, when you look at that string of guys that's come out of Tom Izzo's uh, out of Michigan State with Tom Cream, um, they're just very outstanding coaches. Well, he said it's the kind of thing we've got to do. Let's see where we are in relation to some of these great programs. Inside they go. Gray makes the catch, goes up, and hits the bottom of the backboard, fights to get it back. And it will stay at this end. Possession arrow will keep it in the hands of the Panthers with 11.59 to play. We're in the first half. Pitt has a one-point lead. They were up by seven earlier. Stay with us. It only happens once a year. Rent clearance. The toy The Flyers right now on a roll. They've outscored the Panthers 11 to 5 since the 16-16 mark and leading the way, especially early on, was Brian Roberts. Well, he stepped up big. And coming into this environment, his team was struggling a little bit offensively. He stepped up and knocked down a couple of huge shots for him and settled his team down, and now it's a one-point game. And that's what you need your star to do when you're on the road, John. Well, Ramon is out there right now. Levance Fields, who's the early scoring leader for Pittsburgh, is on the bench. Baseline. No place to go down there for Benjamin. Inside, Ramon puts it up, bending off, tipped up and out, and picked off by Gray. Young from the corner hits the deck and hits the basket. And, and this young man, Young, has really stepped up and played well for Pitt. They've been kind of not knowing whether or not to play him at the three or the four. I think they're probably going to settle him in and let him go back to the four because he's so tough around the basket. But his energy and coming up with a lot of those plays that you don't run anything for somebody has really helped this Pittsburgh team. You don't have to call his number for him to be effective. Oh, the team's exchanging turnovers there. The lead for Pitt is three. It's 16 to 13. And Jamie Dixon works the sidelines a little bit. 
And Roberts will walk it up. They're not a high scoring team, the Flyers. They're averaging only about 66 points a game. No, but they have a lot of different sets and a lot of different ways of getting and this guy a shot. Shooting. Right there, they just went with the high ball screen. He went away from the ball screen, then he reversed and came right back off of it again. That was a set call by Brian Gregory. And Brian Roberts now with three threes, almost another steal, and the Panthers keep it alive. And so far, four for four three-point shooting in the early goings for the Dayton Flyers. You mentioned they're not really a three-point shooting team. Young no. almost gave up that pivot foot. Forces his way down the lane and does draw the foul. No, they're not. But right now, Roberts has a hot hand, and they're really riding it. And Brian Gregory did a great job of recognizing and making that set call. Young, is, this is what he does real well. He attacks the basket. And that's why when he plays the four position, John, I think he has a mismatch with a lot of guys because he's quicker, and he can use his quickness to attack the basket. So what happens is when he's playing that four position instead of three position, they're going to go a little smaller, aren't they? Yeah, you know, small balls in, buddy, and we might as well get used to it. It's all over the country, and Pittsburgh certainly has the perimeter people that they can do that with, and especially they can slide Cook to the perimeter because he can shoot it, and with Ramon and Fields, they're awful tough. Young, one out of two, but it's kept alive by Gray, put back up by Cook. He misses. Here's Gray again. Kicks it out to Ramon. Now Fields will penetrate. Fade away off the glass, bending too hard. And the rebound brought out of there by Andres Sandoval. Sandoval leaves it for Roberts, and he's itching to put it up. No wonder he's three for three shooting yeah. threes. Drive down the lane, shot no good, and a reach-in foul called, and it'll be number two on Kirk Hillsman, the freshman out of St. Henry, Ohio. I thought Roberts held on to the ball a little bit too long that time because he had some guys ahead of him. But one thing for Pittsburgh, they've gotten a lot of shots in close that they're not converting. And that could come back to hurt them a little bit later. You, you see them, they dominate the rebounding 10 to 3, but yet they're not converting on some of the baskets in close. Lead is just one. And only fitting Christmas time. We've had two ties handed out already tonight. <laughs> Here's Cook for three. Bending off, Young tries to get the rebound. Canton is taken away by Sandoval. Here's Roberts again. Fields jumps on him. Aaron Gray already has seven rebounds tonight. Quick move by Plummer to the baseline. Gets around Gray, misses the shot. Aaron did not foul him, and the Panthers get it back. You know, that was one of Dayton's plans to try to drive on Gray, and that time he responded. And one. How about that move? He has made three terrific moves to the basket. When you talk about playing Pittsburgh, especially Fields, you talk about handling the ball screens. And that time he refused the ball screen, was able to drive and get the layup right there. Fields is as good as any guard in the Big East as far as using ball screens and recognizing it. Well, he has had three acrobatic backs, baskets plus a three-pointer, a total of nine to lead all scoring. You know, I don't know where Pittsburgh continues to find these guards that really use the ball screen so well. Again, Knight, Krauser, and now Fields. Well, coming up at halftime, we're going to talk to one of those guys. Carl Krauser will be our guest. As he's back at his alma mater playing overseas. We'll find out what he's been up to. Warren handles. This is Plummer. Pounds in. He traveled. If he hadn't traveled, he'd been called for a charge. Yeah. <laughs> he, he really had a shot right there, and he... he he was trying to do too much. He just got to recognize what the defense gives him. There's Brandon Knight, who's back as the video coordinator for the University of Pittsburgh. He's really kind of still rehabbing some injuries that have kept his professional career at you, bay. He's an awful fine player. We played against him when I was at Miami in his first game. He had five threes against us. I told my coaches he can't shoot that well. Two years later, after they had hung two banners for winning their division, I said, yes, he can shoot that <laughs> apparently, well. <laughs> apparently you were wrong. <laughs> Here's Cook off the feed from Fields. Looks inside to Gray, doesn't go there. On the perimeter, Ramon. Inside, nine minutes left in the first half. Panthers by three. They've been up by as many as seven. Young kicks it to Fields for three. On the way, good! Fields with a dozen already. And, and that's with this Pittsburgh team. They have so many weapons, they're so deep, but they're smart enough to recognize who's hot 
and they're really going to fields right now. Oh, a terrific move by Roberts to push his defender inside, then fade away. Uh, he big time move, and he's stepping up for Dayton right now. He's recognizing that his team is on the road, and he's making the play. He's got 11 so far, trailing only Levance Fields, who has a dozen. Fields with the basketball right now. He has certainly stepped it up for Pitts. Gets to the baseline, to the foul line, shoots and scores. Again, coming off another high ball screen, and Dayton's going to have to talk about how they're going to play the ball screens with Fields because he is really taking advantage of it. But give Jamie Dixon a lot of credit. He's calling his number and letting him go until Dayton shows they can handle it. The reverse. Roberts for three, bending off from the rebound into the hands of Aaron Gray. Good pass to Cook, and he'll go to the line. First basket for Cook. The basket is good. And that's what happened right now. Dayton, outside of, of uh, struggling a little bit on the offensive end, they don't get back in transition. It cost them. So the Panthers have opened up their biggest lead of the half. They have exploded on the run. Good feed, a foul shot to come. Definitely worth the trip. 7.44 remaining here in the opening half, and all of a sudden the Panthers have zoomed out as far as the lead is concerned because they've been running pretty well. They have, and they have a lot of different guys that can handle the basketball, but the wings really get out and cook, and that's one of the things we did in the open. He really fills the lane real well, and he can finish in, in traffic. Well, Cook will be at the line to complete his three-point play attempt as he hit the short basket and was fouled on the play by London Warren. You know, John, one thing with this Pittsburgh team, they really, you can tell the chemistry is there. They get along well with each other. They share the basketball. They cheer for each other. And Jamie Dixon has really done a tremendous job in developing that. Wide open on the back door, but a miss. And a loose ball, and Little kept it alive. He missed the short one on the alley-oop, and then he double dribbled. You know, for Dayton right now, it's really important, I think, for um, Scott to step up and, and, and give some help because they need a, somebody else to step up besides Roberts and score for him. Yeah. They're struggling a little bit in the half court. Scott's really the second leading scorer, has had some big game, veteran player. They really need him right now to step up and help. And he has not scored at all. He is their lone senior on the team. They call him the old man of the team. Fields is feeling it, backs off, and he'll go to the line. It's going to be number two on Andre Sandoval. Let's take a look right now at our Big East leaders in rebounding. They're brought to you by Hyundai, and you can see Aaron Gray is not leading in the conference right now. No, but I tell you what, there's some awful talented players in there, and uh, with Adrian out of Connecticut and and. and they're really, really tough, and I think the Big East is just heading for another tremendous season as we get into January. A miss at the line for Levance Fields. He has only missed three on the season coming into tonight. He's already missed two. There's the preseason pick as the player of the year in the conference. Aaron Gray, he has two points. You know, one of the things, being able to spell him is, is really huge. And somebody stepped in too soon. I think it might have been Biggs. Yeah. But but they can rotate and they can spell him, um, which is really going to help him as you start getting into January and February with back-to-back -back huge games. Benny outside. Now Johnson, the freshman. Pittsburgh has done a really good job of keeping the ball out of the lane. They're not allowing Dayton's penetration and mainly because they're switching on all the crosses. That's going to be a foul on Antonio Graves, the senior from Mansfield, Ohio. It'll be his first. Panthers' lead is nine. We're just inside seven minutes to play. It's the fourth team foul on Pittsburgh. Seven the Panthers are in the bonus at the other end. You know, these Pittsburgh fans are, are, are really used to people like Brown, and Page that were here that defensively just came up with huge plays. But this Pittsburgh team is a pretty solid defensive team. 
They just do it across the board with five guys. Good hard work underneath by Marcus Johnson, the freshman from Cleveland, who went to high school in Akron, Ohio, St. Vincent, St. Mary. And when he was there as the freshman, the king, LeBron James, was the senior. And they say LeBron still communicates with him. He's a really good looking freshman. He shoots the ball well, really attacks the basket real well, and he's really competitive. Yeah, good handoff along the baseline, up and in by Biggs. Well, Panthers getting another inside basket. Foul will go on Marcus Johnson. That'll be his second. So Biggs will go to the line for a chance for the three-point play. And I think if you talk to a lot of people who watch the Oklahoma State game, had the Panthers coming down the stretch in regulation made their free throws and the one and one chances they had, they probably wouldn't have gone to overtime. They probably would have won the game in regulation. Yeah, but that's part of the learning curve, and I think that's why you play on the road and put your teams in that sort of situation so it can pay off for you once you get in the conference play because, again, you know, Pittsburgh's playing a lot of people, and they have a lot of interchangeable parts, and getting that continuity is really important. Biggest lead now. It's a double-digit lead for the first time, but that's something that Brian Gregory expected. He said, we're going to absorb a shot in the first half, and then we have to see how we can bounce back from it. And, and I think they played pretty well. I just think on the offensive end, they've got to get somebody else to step up. They just don't look like they've gotten into a, a flow offensively that has really worked for him. Roberts gets inside, comes up short. You saw him using that lead hand yeah. to hold off the defender. And a bad pass by Fields is picked off. Plummer is ahead of the pack, but taking it all the way down and laying it home. And, and that'll help your offense if you can get a turnover and go coast to coast with it. Because that's his first point. They've been <laughs> wanting him to score, and he, Scott finally gets his name in the scorebook. And let's see if that'll get him off the slide a little bit. Again, Pittsburgh right now is running some motion, looking like they're trying to isolate and get the ball inside the gray. Aaron sets the screen outside, then goes down low. He's being bumped pretty hard in there. He gets bumped every night pretty hard That's in there. <laughs> He's a big man to bump, and they find him off the glass, comes up short, and over the back foul trying to get it back. You know, it's obvious right now to me he doesn't have his legs like he normally does, because every shot John has been short. Well, he's been battling some illness and flu problems of late, so he's going to go to the bench and get a blow right here with his team leading by eight. That's not a normal play for him to make that kind of a foul. No. So Sandoval will march it up. Here comes Roberts, who has moved over to the two guard right now. As he should, I guess, the way he shoots yeah. tonight. Gets it back to Scott. Straightens up for three, comes up short into the hands of Kendall. But he had a pretty good look on that, and that's the kind of shot you have to get for Scott. Here comes Cook. He's cut off, then reverses direction and feeds it low nicely to Antonio Graves for his second field goal. Seven different Panthers have scored. Back to a 10-point lead and almost a turnover. It was a turnover. You know, Pittsburgh is being very aggressive, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end. On the defensive end, they're getting their hands on a lot of things, but offensively, they're attacking the basket off the dribble. And with Dayton is stepping up, making the first check, they're not making the second rotation, and that's why they're getting the ball in so deep. And Roberts, who plays about 34, 35 minutes a game, gets his first rest of the night as Ramon will walk it up. Levance Fields back to the bench for Pitt. This is Antonio Graves. One of the veterans on this team, Kendall, a 50-year senior, tries to go low with a pass, winds up in the hands of Young, he follows his own shot and gets the roll. And that's where he's awful tough around the basket. Those are the types of plays that Young makes for. You don't have to run a play for him, and he still creates points. Three from outside. Bending short, tipped up, and a foul call. On the rebound, Marcus Johnson is going to pick up his third personal foul. So the freshman is in some early foul trouble. The first player with three. Panthers have opened up their biggest lead of the half. It's a 12-point difference. If you're looking to... So far... I gotta get an Oscar for this. 
four twenty two is our score and so far Perry the Panthers are pretty much dominated inside we haven't seen much from the Flyers. No we haven't and there you see Hillsman right there as he scores in the paint and for Dayton to come in here and to have some success they've got to get something in around the basket but this is where Pittsburgh defense has done such a great job and not allowing any penetration either off the dribble or even with penetrating passes. Well, most of that perimeter offense for Dayton is in the hands of number two right there as Young will go to the line. And he nails it. So he's got six points. Seven Panthers have scored. Only four Flyers have scored so far tonight. And John, when you talk about a veteran team, you talk about teams that are able to recognize game situations, and that's what this Pittsburgh team does. They take advantage of, all, of, of any mistakes you may make. And out of off balance shot, and now it's three on one. Cook will take it in himself, rolls it up, no good. Young underneath missed the shot and a rebound by Benny. I thought Cook got a little bit too deep with that because he had a guy trailing up off the right and the left. And at that time, Monty Scott got in such a hurry to start his drive, he forgot to put the ball on the court. So he'll turn it over. And Jamie just pulled Cook out. I'm sure he's going to talk to him about that. He had some guys trailing and just got himself a little too deep. They're going to go over with him and then put him back. Seven first half turnovers for Dayton so far. The team, that's about normal for them. They average 14 a game. And we've got 322 to play in the half. Well, the biggest thing for this Dayton team, and they're, they're a young basketball team, they start two freshmen. You know, against this physical pit defense, they've got to be able to get the ball inside some and make the defense collapse and then reverse it, and then that'll free up those jump shots a little easier for them. Young, all alone as he rolled down the lane. Where was the weak side help that time? Yeah, and, and that's the thing that Young does. I mean, he comes up with those plays. For that's why he's so valuable to this Pittsburgh team, because he can do those sorts of things for you. A 7-0 run by the Panthers. They've opened up their biggest lead of the half. It is 15 points. Sandoval cut off. Benny sets a screen. Pittsburgh is switching all ball screens, so the screens are really becoming ineffective right now, and they really can't penetrate. And look how far Roberts is from the basket as the shot clock winds down inside five. Sandoval will shoot, misses at the buzzer, tracked down by Kendall. You know, the other thing on those screens when they come up, they also, they always make sure you feel their body. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful move. Sam Young, his second game with 10 points or more. John, you got to like this Pittsburgh team. I mean, you pick up the paper, you have people questioning their defense. They come out, they put a tremendous defensive stand on. They get out, they run. Everybody makes a contribution. They share the basketball. They're really playing well, especially coming back with, with only a half a, day, a half a day to prepare for this team. Oh, Young trying for another three-point play. This is his fifth try at the line. And he's only made two. Scott snatches the rebound, but he's in double figures with 10. I was on Penny underneath. Great run out that time by Dayton, and that's what they have to do. They're going to have to push the ball some. They've got to find a way to get a little easier shots than what they've been getting. Just a run out, got behind the Pittsburgh defense there, and Mr. Young comes over and tries to make the block and draws the foul. Puts Little at the line. He has not scored tonight. The sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee, not Ohio, and he misses his first chance at the line. Everybody in the building wanted to travel except the men in the striped shirts. And we've got a foul on the way in. That'll be number two on Ronald Ramon. I think I'd have to agree with him. How did he not travel that time? Well, he got a break on the road that time. We got an awful good officiating crew. And, and sometimes you get in those situations and referees wait for the other guy maybe to make the call. Now Roberts, good from the field. He's one of the best in the country at the line, a 90% free throw shooter. He's got a dozen points, two minutes to play in the half. But John, he's played awful well. He really does a good job of putting the ball on the floor and mixing the drive as far as pulling up and shooting with a hand in his face. 
He's really a, a very talented offensive player and going to give a lot of people in the A-10 a lot of trouble this year. Well, he was a two guard, but then they had a guy transfer late in 05. Trent Meacham went to Illinois, and he's playing today Illini a little bit now, but that forced him to make a change at the point guard, and they weren't happy with the results that they got out of that point guard position because apparently the guy that took over the job, Warren Williams, wasn't getting the job done, so he was forced to move to the point last year. And he's, he's made the adjustment. I think the biggest thing for a shooter that plays the point is knowing when to go get his own shot and when to share the basketball. And certainly I thought Roberts early was trying to share the basketball. And then when they had a tough time scoring, he stepped up and tried and called his own number a couple times. You can see Sandoval handling the ball. And then now Roberts against Graves. Long three-pointer, too strong. Kendall has the rebound. And that's going to part of the game for Kendall that's been missing. He's averaging just over five rebounds a game. And that's also one of the reasons we're seeing more of Young at the number four, the power forward. Yeah, because that's one of the things this Pittsburgh team has made their reputation on rebounding the basketball. Here comes Cook down the lane. Thought he drew a foul. He did not. Flyers racing back to the other end. Missed the shot. Kendall the rebound. Here's Fields with a minute to go. Cook skips it to the corner. Now Fields. Panthers will work the clock. 25 on the shot clock. 45 to play in the half. Pittsburgh's lead is 13. It's been as many as 15. And we had a couple of ties in the first half. But Dayton has never had the lead. Kendall with a nice catch. There's the skip. That's a three. That's too strong. Tip is good. Cook coming in. I tell you, you have to love Cook. He brings a lot of energy. He runs the floor well. He perpetual motion in the half court. And that time, his man did not put a body on him. He was able to get the tip in. Great defensive effort by Pittsburgh coming in here in this first half. And it was more their defensive effort than, than Dayton's not being ready to play. Plummer. Works his way into the lane and then feeds Sandoval, who at the buzzer misses the shot. Well, that's it for the first 20 minutes. A good bounce back half for the University of Pittsburgh. They lead it by 15, 41 to 26. We'll talk to former Panther Carl Krauser and start our halftime when we come back. It's been a kind of a quiet half for Aaron Gray. He had only two points, but Levance Fields was outstanding with 14 in the first half. Well, the result is the Panthers do have the lead by 15, 41 to 26 in this matchup of the Atlantic 10 and the Big East. I'm a Mecca Okafor, college graduate, Charlotte Bobcat, and proud recipient of the Aeropost Style Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year. Graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years, I balance books and basketball. Aeropo Style gives out more than $300,000 in scholarships to both students and student athletes. It wasn't and still isn't all about the rebounds. Did you know a surprisingly large number of Jefferson County residents work in Pittsburgh? Why? Because they get it. Lower taxes, affordable housing, quality education, and excellent health care. For a better quality of life. Steubenville, Jefferson County, Ohio. The Burber the Burr. When you have Comcast on demand with Steelers 24-7, it's like having the team right in your home. Oh, guys, I thought I said no football in the house. I'm sorry. You can get to know the players. That's a popcorn, guys. Extra salt and extra butter. And see exclusive behind-the-scenes action. Oh, no fair. Yeah, life isn't fair. Don't miss out. Oh. Get digital cable in your home for as low as $3.99 a month for 12 months and get the Steelers in your home 24-7. Boy, honey, these guys sure eat a lot. Christmas is here, and so is the all-new Lincoln MKX, only at Northland Lincoln Mercury. And just in time for Christmas, just sign and drive with no money down on Best Buy rated vehicles at Northland. Pay just $2.99 per month on an 07 Mercury Mariner 4x4 with no money down. Pay just $3.99 per month on an 07 all-wheel drive MKZ with no money down. Offer ends January 3rd. Paying more is up to you. Paying less is up to Northland. Route 19, Cranberry. It was so hard for Angela when her mom died. You know, sometimes dad is the last person a teenager wants to talk to. The caring place, that made a big difference. Angela's doing better in school, and uh, we talk a lot more. 
Some days are still hard, but she's come a long way. Sometimes it takes more than health care to ensure a family's health. A helping hand in the places we call home, Highmark. Hello, I'm Cedric Thomas, local sales manager of KDK TV, and I get it. Lower taxes, quality education, affordable housing, and excellent health care. For a better quality of life, Steubenville. Jefferson County, Ohio, the bird with the bird. Halftime score here, number seven, Pitt leads Dayton out of the Atlantic 10, 41 to 26. Let's check some of the other top ranked teams, what's happening on holiday basketball, holiday hoops around the country, and it was UCLA number one. Boy, they did a number on Michigan, 92 to 55. Terrific start for Ben Howland's club. It's maybe a little surprising because of the way Florida laid it on Ohio State by 16, but they were playing at home, led by Green's 24. Alabama beat up on Coppin State. And Kansas over Boston College, 84 to 66. Big game for Wright with a double-double. LSU over Louisiana Tech. That's the final. Davis had 23. Memphis by 40 over Middle Tennessee State. They had five players in double figures. The snow took care of Air Force in Northern Colorado. Clemson rolling over Western Carolina, 103 to 60. Rivers with 24 off the bench, and Oregon off to its best start in 60 years. They are 11-0 after their win today. Michigan State beats Wisconsin Green Bay by 12. Halftime, number five, Wisconsin coming off that win over Pitt a week ago, leading Wichita State, one of the top 10 teams. We've got more to come. We'll continue with our halftime from the Peterson Center after this. It's easy to overlook your lawn when you lead a busy life. That's where Scott's Lawn Service can help. Hi, I'm Ashton Ritchie with the Scott's Company. Just give Scott's Lawn Service a call. A Scott's specialist will inspect your lawn and design a program specifically suited to its needs. And we apply Scott's proven products to your lawn. With Scott's Lawn Service, you'll never again face lawn problems alone. For a free no-obligation lawn analysis, call now, 800-238-1400. That's 800-238-1400. When you're a, someone who's looking forward to a challenge each night, you know you, you're going to have to execute in the final two minutes to win the game. That's the ultimate in competition. It's never an easy game. I mean, we've won by 18, and afterwards, I, 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 <laughs> that was tough. It's scary. It's scary as a coach to approach because there are no easy nights. It's almost like the NBA. You just know it's going to come down to the last possession. you got to get a stop. It makes you a better player, makes you a better team. It's always been competitive and always will be. Subway Restaurants presents a whole new take on steak. Real steak, lean, tender, perfectly seasoned, and loaded onto our new premium steak sandwiches. Like the new roasted garlic peppercorn steak with fire roasted grilled peppers and onions and our roasted garlic peppercorn sauce. Try one today with your choice of fresh toppings on one of five freshly baked breads. The new premium steak sandwiches, steak and cheese, or the new roasted garlic peppercorn steak. Now at all Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Worms and germs can attack your computer. Something's wrong with your computer, and you've tried everything. Try this. One quick click. Velos will keep your entire system virus-free, safe, and secure. With Velos, to make it faster than the day you got it. Visit Velos.com. And make it quick. If you even think you're slowing down, get a free virus scan at Velos.com and make it fast. <laughs> One, 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 it has been a little different so far on Thursday against Oklahoma State. There were 19 ties, 19 lead changes. There's only been two ties, and Pitt's been in front most of the way tonight. They're up by 15 at halftime. It's not the only action in the Big East as we get ready for conference play. Cincinnati over NC State, 80 to 71 was the final, led by Vaughn's 25 points. Georgetown over the Naval Academy. Green had 20 points. Seton Hall, a winner over University of Pennsylvania, Davis off the bench with a double-double. 
And Louisville laid it on Miami. Smith with 22 in that game. Chandler had 22 for DePaul as they defeated California. And Villanova over LaSalle, a big five matchup there. Sumter, Curtis Sumter with 13 points. Halftime at St. John's over Columbia, 40 to 31, a nine point lead for the Red Storm. And the updated standings in the Big East Conference with conference play beginning after the first of the year. Most of the teams will have one more non-conference game before they get to Big East regular season play. And of course, that's where the fun really begins. And the only undefeated team so far is number 11, UConn. Yeah, but you have Notre Dame who's had some great wins against Maryland, against a nationally ranked Alabama team. This West Virginia team has really stepped up and played well. And what do you say with Marquette with Dominic James? Is he exciting? And we're seeing Pittsburgh tonight. But this Providence team has really been a surprise, I think, to a lot of people. And they have a tough game coming up against um, Florida State, but they've been playing well. Well, even with a slow start, Rutgers is now above 500, so there are no Big East teams that are under 500. But that's all going to change when we get to the regular season. I guarantee you that. We've got more from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, after this. Business on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1 800 the Amex now. I wanted to build my future. At the University of Pittsburgh, I learned with the best students. Pitt students win top national and international scholarships. And Pitt's alumni, they receive the world's top prizes. Pitt's athletes are among the best ever. And Pitt's ranked in the top 20 national public universities. At school, People build their future. At Pitt, we're building our future together. If you want a Nissan, there's only one place to go. I'm Mike McWilliams of Pittsburgh East Nissan and West Hills Nissan. We have double the selection and double the value. See it all at 9020.us. Worried about your credit? Talk to the credit construction crew today. Call Ernie in the East or Fran in the West. Or apply online at 9020.us. West Hills Nissan. Moon Township. Or Pittsburgh East Nissan. Monroeville. Visit 9020.us. That's us. Panther Physical Therapy. We don't just provide the care, we do care. Sean Collins strengthens your body. Lori Maeta gives you special attention. Tom Nigel makes you move easier. Jay Lemke applies precision therapy. Josh Lenthal concentrates on your needs. Kelly Burford relieves your pain. Vicki English improves your mobility. Panther Physical Therapy. We don't just provide the care, we do care. <laughs> It's Pittsburgh by 15 at halftime, 41-26 over Dayton. And tonight's Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Fund. Let's take a closer look at Coach Jamie Dixon. And everything you look up close on him is pretty good, isn't it? Oh, what, is, what a career he's had here at Pittsburgh. And again, he's taken over a program. And John, he comes into a new building, inherits a tremendous tradition. What does he do? He just takes it to another level. Well, he has certainly done a great job in his four seasons at the helm here, taking his team to the NCAAs. Every year they've had at least a 10 0 start to their season. So it's been all good. Let's talk about the highlights of the first half. And obviously, one of the big highlights for Dayton has to be Roberts because he's got half their points. Oh, without question, he's stepped up. When, whenever a, you're, the, you're the key man, your team is struggling, you have to step up and make plays for him. And that's what he's done. He's pushed the envelope in the first half with some really key jump shots. But, you know, Mr. Fields has been really the story. He's got Pitt going. His he, way he attacked the basket. He came utilizing the pick and roll, knocking down jump shots. And, and then Sam Young, his energy. And again, we talk about a guy that gets points where you don't have to run plays for him. That's invaluable to a team or to a coach as you see him right there on a great drive. Statistically, it breaks out like this. Field goal percentage, obviously, much better for Pitt. They're over their season average at almost 55. And the rebounding difference is also huge in the first half. Well, th that's how they make their living. But the thing is, they've been able to do it without turning the basketball over. They've really done a great job of sharing the basketball and playing unselfishly. 
That's statistically and highlight wise the story of the first half. But we've got another 20 minutes to go back with you after this. College basketball fans, get ready for the 2007 Big East Women's Basketball Championship presented by Arrow Postal. March 3rd through the 6th at the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. See 12 of the top Big East women's basketball teams battle for the Big East Championship Tournament title. Ticket packages are just $99 for all sessions. For tickets and more information, call 860-525-4500. That's 860-525-4500 or log on to Ticketmaster.com. Well, the Garden's the best place to play college basketball in the country anyway. For a regular season or any game, it's just an exciting place. But at the tournament time, uh, it's the best place to have a tournament. It kind of reminds me of the old days when the NIT was at the Garden, and coming to New York is where you proved yourself. And the Big East is the same way. I truly know what it's all about, the tradition and the history of the place. And 25 years is quite special for the Big East. This is the greatest city in the world, and I truly believe that Madison Square Garden is the mecca of basketball in the world. I'm Trenton Kuznerik with this Dodge Pittsburgh Sports Tonight Halftime Update. All right, to the hardwood, UCLA hosting Michigan. Yeah, that's Ben Howland and UCLA off to a hot start leading 8-2. to two. Josh Schiff grabs the board, goes in for the hoop, 10-2 UCLA leads. Bruins, though, doing a good job of containing Michigan's Courtney Sims. Post up but cannot get the shot to fall. It's all right, though. Runs that way there to get the board and the bucket. Sims, though, did finish with 13, only scored two, though, in the first half. Second half, Bruins on a roll. 10-2 run kept by this steal. Breakaway, and once again, Josh Ship going hard to the rim this time. The Bruins win easily, 92-55. All right, Buckeyes and Gators on the hardwood. Not quite the national championship game. 17-15, Ohio State lead. Then Joe Kim Noah drives, finds Tareen Green outside. Three ball. Gators take the 18-17 lead, do not look back. Buckeyes trailing under a minute in the first. Jamar Butler pulls up for three, can't get it to fall, but the big man, Greg Otis, slams it home. Florida, though, up by 38-29 at the half. Second half, 57-45 Florida. Odin misses, and then Al Horford gets the rebound, hands off to Tareen Green, who goes long range for the three ball. He finishes with 24. The Gators win very easily, 86-60. All right, here's what you can see following the game on Pittsburgh Sports Tonight. Complete analysis, plus we'll have Pens, Pirates, and Steelers news. It's 41-26. The Panthers have done it in spurts in the first half with 11-2, 7-0, and 9-0 runs. And most of the scoring for the Flyers has come from number two. 13 points. As always, they share the rebounding load. Sandoval had a couple of assists. But all the scoring has come from Roberts. And there's a turnover to start to throw it. Hit off of Kendall out of bounds. You're saying when we were away at the break that they need other people to contribute to this offense to make something happen. Oh, without question. That big win over uh, Louisville. Plummer stepped up and had nine points for him. Little came in and had 15 points for him, and, and they went over Louisville. They need these people to step up in this game for them to get out of here with a win. Scott's line drive jumper picked off on the rebound by Levance Fields. The leading scorer for Pittsburgh with 14. Here's Cook with a quick move inside, and he traveled. You know, John, and that's one of the things coaches understand. When we talk about mature teams, those are teams that are able to recognize situations because it's opportunities come so quickly that you have to be able to take advantage of them. So Pittsburgh, Fields has stepped up, Young has stepped up and taken advantage of those opportunities. Uh, for Dayton, Little and, and Scott have not. Hillsman, maybe only a second or third shot of the All night. Right. He has only one basket. He got it inside against Gray but couldn't finish. So Fields back for the Panthers. Neither team has scored in the opening minute of the second half. Pittsburgh resets in half court. Their athletic director, Jeff Long, he wants to send along greetings to his mom and dad, Ruth and Harold Long, who are watching back in the Dayton area. He said, you've got to tell them hi. Because I know they're watching tonight. So we say Merry Christmas to the Long family. That's the first basket of the night for Kendall and also the biggest lead of the evening. Roberts baseline move, good. And that was the first time a Dayton player has been able to penetrate all the way to the basket and be able to finish in a half-court situation. But now you'll see Pittsburgh play Pittsburgh basketball. They'll really try to grind you right now in the half-court. 
they do a good job of executing their half court set. You see Fields coming off the stagger right there. Now he backs away. Shot clock at 15. They tried to go inside. It's knocked out of bounds. They had a mismatch because Roberts had to switch with, with Fields coming off the stagger, and they were trying to jam the ball into Kendall. Panthers will keep it. Baseline jumper is good by Antonio Graves, his third field goal. The senior from Mansfield, Ohio, pushes the lead out. And what they do, they use Kendall and they use Graves' bodies, the shooters do, coming off of those baseline screens very effectively. A little misses from short range and another rebound. But let me tell you something. Greg, uh, is doing what he needs to do. Brian is doing what he needs to do. He's getting the ball in low. He's trying to get, he has Scott take a, a, a pop. He had Little take a shot. And that's what you need to do. You need to try to encourage your other guys to step up, especially early in the half, and see if you can get them going. That's really good coaching. The rebound for Gray, his 10th. But he has only two points offensively. But I think that shows you on this Pittsburgh team. They don't need Gray to score a lot of points every night. He does so many other things well for them that they've got guys that can that can get points. Hard work along that baseline by Antonio Graves. He had about three cracks at it and will finally get a chance to go to the foul line. First foul on Roberts. Somehow the little guys were battling it out underneath the backboard that time. I tell you, John, small ball has become the way of the world now. Being able to play with three guards would help your ball handling. Villanova, I think, last year really kind of got that thing to another level, and I think you're going to see a lot of that this year. Well, very few teams, when you post a starting lineup list, two forwards, a center, and two guards, you know? They might have three forwards out there. They might have three guards out there. The lead is 18. It's the biggest for the Panthers. But again, now Pittsburgh is locking in. They're not allowing the penetration. Fields goes for the steal. Hillsman from outside steps down the lane but doesn't do anything. Johnson from outside. That's short. Long rebound. Nice pass to Cook. And he'll jam. That's what Cook does. Cook runs out as well as anybody that I've seen so far in college basketball this year. He really gets out on transition. A 20 point lead for number seven, Pitt. Challenge doesn't build character, it reveals it. Through the market's ups and downs, Oppenheimer Funds has proven we have what it takes to keep moving forward. Just one reason why Barron's has recognized Oppenheimer Funds for having some of the top portfolio managers in the business. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this. Hybrid Synergy Drive technology balances three benefits that everyone wants. Excellent fuel economy, ultra-low emissions, and quick acceleration. The all-new 07 Camry Hybrid is the perfect mid-sized car to fit any lifestyle. The 268-horsepower Highlander Hybrid handles your 4x4 SUV needs. And the award-winning Prius starts around 23000 Toyota hybrids bring plenty of smiles per gallon. Toyota, moving forward. Sid sets it up. Pull the Armstrong score! Precision passes and awesome action. Penguins hockey is where it's at. Gather your gang December 27th. Fans 14 and under get a Penguin Street hockey stick from Trib Total Media. January 2nd is Get Go Scratch and Win, where every fan's a winner. Here comes Crosby the other way. Sidney Crosby to the goal shot. He scores! Sidney Crosby with a great intervention. Get your tickets today at PittsburghPenguins.com. A 7-2 start, and the Panthers now have raced out to a 20-point lead, and they're using their speed on the court to their advantage. Well, they just do a good job because whoever gets the rebound has the ability to either dribble it or pass it ahead. And there you see them finish on tremendously that time. And that's what a dunk really sounds like. I tell you, he, they really do a good job of getting the ball out on the break. And they have so many people, John, that can push the basketball. So it's not like you just have to wait for Fields or one of the guards to come back and get it. 
Sandoval with it outside. Heisman now being guarded by Kendall. Shot clock winding down to 10. We've seen a lot of that tonight. A little with a move. And the ball slips out of his hands, out of bounds, but touch last, say the officials, by Pitt. I mean, this Dayton team is a young basketball team. They start two freshmen. They only have one senior. Uh, you know, they've played extremely well at home. They've, they've only been on the road one other time they've lost. They're struggling here tonight. They have to learn from this. And I think this is why Coach Gregory wanted this game to get them on the road, to get them ready for 8-10. And certainly, they've got to get other people besides Roberts to be able to step up and make contributions. And there's some things, John, as a coach, you understand the only way you learn it is going through it. Graves short on his three and over the backboard. So well, they are very, very tough to play at home. They have a, a dynamite record there. Last year they did beat Cincinnati. Their loss in the tournament was to St. Joe's. Energy Select Sector Spider. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1 800 the Amex now. If you're looking to ramp up your ride, get ready. Advance Auto Parts has a special order center just for you. Your one of a kind, one stop shop for everything you could ever want in parts and performance accessories. Everything from lift kits to cool custom accessories is ready for direct to your door delivery or convenient in store pickup. When you want the most complete selection of parts and accessories, the only place to go is the Special Order Center in Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. I use Isley's Chip Tam for all sorts of things. I put it on top of salad, I put it in the middle of a grilled cheese, and my son loves my Chip Tam barbecues. Remember Isley's. Ask for it at your supermarket deli. Right now, it's the year-end clearance at Barrel Subaru. And right now, it's the Blue Tag Super Sale at Barrel Subaru. And twice the sales means up to twice the savings, but only at the one and only Barrel Subaru. Definitely worth the trip. It's the year-end clearance sale and the Blue Tag Super Sale right now at Barrel Subaru. That means you can lease a brand new 07 Forester for as low as $199 a month. Right now at Barrel Subaru. Definitely worth the trip. What's this generation coming to? Same great deli taste that's wowed them for generations past. Isley's original chip chopped ham. Fresher, leaner, hammier. Remember Isley's. Ask for it now at your supermarket deli. 20 point difference in our game with 15 or 49 to play and a lot of the punch for the Panthers has come off the bench, especially by Sam Young. Uh, and, and that just shows the depth of this Pittsburgh team. When I talked to Jamie this morning, he thought that I asked him about being fatigued. He said, this is where having the bodies really step up and help us, and it certainly has tonight. Well, eight of the nine guys who've played have scored, and they, Jamie says, I have nine starters on this team. Right now, his starting five is out there. But again, the biggest thing, I think this Pittsburgh team, they know what they have to do to win basketball games. You know, tonight they're really stepping up defensively. They're not giving Dayton anything easy inside. That's about the best opportunity that Dayton had, had in a long time in the low post area. And that's what veterans teams do. I mean, they know how to just take you out of what you want to do, especially at home. That is the second foul on Levon Kendall, the redshirt senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. Pretty good stroke for a guy only shooting 55% from the free throw line this season. Well, well these Dayton freshmen are going to are really talented, and they're going to be good. I mean, the coaching staff is really high on them, and that's why they think they can even be even better this year than they were a year ago, even though they play in the freshmen because of their ability. Well, they wound up last year at 14 and 17. They were 6 and 10 in the A-10. Of course, no strangers to Pittsburgh coming here to play Duquesne. This is the third Atlantic 10 team that the Panthers have played this year. They defeated UMass. They defeated Duquesne. 
and they have the lead here. And you have to give Jamie Dixon a lot of credit for playing a tough schedule because you know, they have not shied away from anybody going into a very difficult Big East. And again, you can say, well, they have a veteran team, they can do it. But still, I think that by doing that, especially going to Auburn, you know, going on the road like they have, has really made this team a lot better. Well, the three game road trip was truly a test. They sneaked away from the University of Buffalo with a victory only because Buffalo ran out of gas in the <laughs> second half. They didn't have the legs to finish that game. So Pitt had the lead only like six minutes out of the 40 minutes, but they had the lead at the 40th minute. So that's what counts. And they ran into that buzzsaw at Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin would have been about anybody they played on that particular Saturday. And then they had that slugfest with Oklahoma State. And, and again, just you got to have a pretty good contract to schedule that, John. I can tell you that. Runner by Roberts, bending off. Scramble for the rebound. Kendall has it for Pittsburgh. Gets it ahead to Ronald Ramon and back in the lineup. And I just think they're very effective when they play both Ramon and Fields together. How about that follow shot by Aaron Gray? It was a good feed. He missed the short shot, but was able with his length to put it back in. And they've done a good job of isolating him in, in the low block. They've taken away the weak side help. And a lot of teams now are not going down to Dublin because he passes the ball so well and sets up some of the other guys for easy shots. This is Roberts off the feed and nestles home the three. Roberts with his fourth three-pointer, and he has 18 tonight. His high is 30 this year. And he's been very impressive because he's been challenged on just about every shot, and they've really been putting a lot of pressure on him. Ramon to Fields, they go a little smaller right now. It's interesting too, Perry, if you look at the, the nine guys that he has, he can put a lot of different combinations out on the court. He can, and, and he's got the ability to attack whatever your weaknesses may be. Kendall. He can go big, he can go small, and he can always go with Mr. Gray inside. Well, Gray got his 12th rebound, but he also turned the ball over trying to get back to the basket. Biggs will check back in along with Young, while Jimmy Binney the junior from Johnstown, Iowa, checks back for the Flyers, who trail it 51-33. You know, sometimes, John, when you play a lot of people, you look at the attitude of guys on the bench and see how they respond. But everybody, when they come out of the game, they're paying attention to what's going on. They're cheering for their teammate. It's really, really a close-knit team, this Pittsburgh team. And that's why they're having the success that they've had in this program. Good reverse move by Norman Plummer. That's his first basket of the night. I have been told uh, it hasn't happened yet because Pitt has started the same five guys. But if they made a change in the starting lineup, it will not affect the chemistry on the team. And, and I really believe that. Ronald Ramon, baseline shot good. Panthers back up by 18. Now, if you're, if you're dating right now, what you're trying to do is get this the score down to around 10 at about the six or seven minute mark and give yourself a chance to get back in this basketball game right now so you can't get it every, you can't get it back all in one possession so you just have to kind of play solid basketball and nick away at this lead and that time fields lost it on his way to the basket roberts long three off the mark and kendall the rebound levon has picked up his rebounding here in the second half he really has, and he means a lot to this team. He does a lot of the tough stuff. He sets a lot of the ball screens. He goes in, to the glass. Well, he's paid back right there. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> when you play Pittsburgh, you better be able to handle the ball screens because they're going to put bodies on you, and your guards have to be able to get through them. Well, that's the thing about Pitt. Whether it's offense or defense, you're going to feel somebody. You know what I mean? You're well, going to know they're there. Without question. They spent some time in the weight room. There you see he keeps his head up, doesn't pick up the dribble, and finds Kendall right there for the easy basket. And again, you talk about, now here's the guy, Ramon, that comes in off the bench. He, could, he really had a chance to maybe shoot that ball, but he took it in deeper and, and, and fed the ball off. That's the unselfishness of this Pittsburgh team. Well, and the success also is mirrored by the women's basketball team, ranked in the top 25 at number 22. They lost last Thursday to Duke 72-51, but Agnes's team is off to a 12-1 start. 
So we it, salute them as well. And she's a fine coach. I was with her at Georgia Tech. Yeah, that's and she's, right, an awful, she's an awful talented coach. Oh, she's a great lady. She has a lot of fun, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, she, she, she has a little bit of a personality. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. She's always coming out and saying, when are you going to televise one of my games? <laughs> well, you have to get better, Agnes, and they are getting better. Tipped away out of bounds. Touch last by Pitt. Flyers will keep it with 12-11 to go in the game. You know, John, this is a beautiful building. I never got an opportunity to play in here. It's a beautiful building. But whenever you inherit a, a, a beautiful building like this, the expectations always grow. And that's another part of what Jamie Dixon inherited here, taking over the Pittsburgh program, and he's really stepped up. Well, you know, we were wondering how many people would actually be here during the holidays because the students are off, and they will be next week when they play Florida A&M University right here. But there's a good house in here tonight. And I think probably because they lost a couple games, folks wanted to see if they could get them going again. Good job by Roberts. He didn't get the roll. And Kendall hands another rebound off to Ramon. And again, Pittsburgh running the floor real well. Look at the oh, Yeah, it, It's obvious when you're sitting here watching and see how these kids play so well together. Little gets the good feed and the basket just his second of the night. Ramon does a really good job of running this team. He gets everybody involved. Again, he's very unselfish. He's known as a three-point shooter, but he, he is a little bit more than that as a guard. Here comes Young. Fights his way down the lane, and he travels. But Jamie Dixon thought he was bumped on the way in. It'll take us to the timeout. A dozen turnovers for Pitt, but they still lead it by 20. Four. College graduate Charlotte Bobcat and proud recipient of the Aeropost Style Big E Scholar Athlete of the Year. Graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years, I balance books and basketball. Aeropost Style gives out more than $300,000 in scholarships to both students and student athletes. It wasn't and still isn't all about the rebounds. Giant Eagle is dropping prices again. This time on qualifying generic prescription drugs at Giant Eagle Pharmacy. Now get prescriptions for only $4 each every day when you enroll in the Giant Eagle Pharmacy Rewards Program, which covers over 300 select medications at commonly prescribed dosages, up to a 30-day supply. Plus, Giant Eagle Pharmacy will match competitors' prices on any prescription. Giant Eagle Pharmacy, lowering the price of keeping your family healthy every day. One, 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 one. Now at the new number one Cochrane Hyundai Superstore, Sonata Sedans as low as 12843. All new Santa Fe's from just 17988, both with America's best warranty. At the new number one Cochrane Hyundai of Monroeville. One for reason. Those Christmas dreams right now, anyway, are coming true. It's a 20-point lead for Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. Big difference in the shooting percentage. Well, yeah, it, you know, for Dayton right now, what they have to do is really concentrate and work hard, I think, right now to execute their offense. They need to work to get the best shots that they can. And you know, when I say work to do that, a lot of times kids think offensively, we just come down, you know, we make a couple cuts and we shoot the basketball. But I'm talking about really screening hard, coming hard to the basketball, reversing the basketball real well, and really working hard right now to get good looks. That foul is going to go on Keith Benjamin. He'll pick up number two. Almost nine minutes gone in this second half. The Panthers have been comfortably in front most of the way. They opened up a 15-point halftime lead and then stretched it out with a 7-2 run to start the second half. So right now they're in control. But it's still, it's still a lot of time. If they can put the, some baskets together, and there you see them, they got the ball inside. It, it didn't go, but that's that was good offense. They really worked to get a high percentage shot. Gray got the block. Biggs has the ball. Back to Ramon. Looks for Young. Now Benjamin. Thought about going over the top, decided not to. Baseline move and Biggs will get the basket. John, I'm going to sound repetitive, but again, 
this Pittsburgh team has really done a great job of sharing the basketball. And for, to be in December and to see a team really recognize offensive opportunities as well and as quickly as Pittsburgh does, you just don't see that every day. And they're really playing unselfishly. Three-point play by Tyrell Biggs. He has six points. One thing that's changed, though, as you look, Terry, at their recruits for this year. You know, they did a great job in New York, Brooklyn, the Bronx, places like that. There are none of those kids on the list this year. It's a little different. Yeah, well, they have made a living in New York, and that's not a bad place to make a living getting those kids up. And sometimes, as you get better, you think you can expand your recruiting base. But I would tell uh, uh, the Pittsburgh coaching staff, don't go too far from New York City, though. Let's watch the shooting technique of Roberts, who's a great foul shooter, but it's a little bit different. That's a rare miss for him. Well, it's the first time he had anybody hanging on him. So That's true. <laughs> and he's not going to miss two in a row. He's got 19 points. And Dayton will try a little pressure right now. now one of the things that they say about him, that in his time at Dayton, he's a junior now, he hasn't grown any, but he's gotten a lot stronger, a lot more physical. Well, when you're a shooter like that, you know you're going to have people hanging on you. So if you don't get stronger, you're not going to get your shot. Benjamin lines up a three. It's too strong. Tipped out, tracked down. Benjamin gets it back. You know, one of the things Pittsburgh is doing, they're running a, a little bit more motion. And I think they're doing that so they can play a different combination. Oh, what a pass. Unfortunately, Biggs lost the handle, but the Panthers with 24 on the shot clock will get it back. That was another great pass by Ramon. Uh, he, he just comes in and he just does so many things. Again, people recognize him for his three-point shooting, but I think defensively he does a really good job, and he plays with a really good basketball IQ. And now I think they're going to say that the Flyers had control of the basketball, so it'll be 35, not 24 on the clock. And no, they, be happy put it to back, take they put it back to 24. There was the good pass, but a tip, and they say that he had, did not have possession of the basketball when he stepped on the inline. Now Young looks inside to Gray, working against Heisman, the freshman, the senior against the freshman, and the reach in and the tip by London Warren, another freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. In that time, Dayton went down a double. If you're going to double a guy, and, and this is what Gray is making people do, they wait till they put, he puts it on the floor. A lot earlier, people were just running at him when he caught it, and he just does such a good job of passing it out of that that he was burning people. That's going to be foul number four on Ronald Ramon, who's fighting to get the basketball back. He'll sit down because Levance Fields will come back on. Let's update some of the scores in the top 25. Wichita State right up there. And they are trailing right now in the second half. It's 44-36. Wisconsin number five is winning. It's a very strong Wisconsin team again this year. St. John's has the lead over Columbia. Panthers have the lead here over Dayton. Up by 22 past the midway point. Scott short jumper good. Monty Scott just his second field goal tonight. And again, that's huge. You know, when you're a senior, you're on the road. They need him stepping up, and if they can get him going in the last nine minutes, it'll really help as the season for him to get going for the season progresses on. The dump down to Gray, kicks it to the corner. Rattles the three out, and that's going to be an over-the-back foul on Aaron Gray. He'll pick up number three. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh tonight. We wish all of you a Merry Christmas. The Panthers ranked seventh going into this weekend. We'll see where they are after tonight. I'm John Sanders along with Perry Clark. And Aaron Gray with three fouls will sit. But again, he made a good kick out to the corner there. They just missed an open jump shot. Hand off to Roberts. Got a little push that time. Scott with a nice drive and a good finish. And now he's enough of that up, yeah. from Monty Scott. Now he's stepping up and becoming more aggressive. Gets the lead back to 18. The question is, Perry, do they have enough time to come all the way back? A lot well, of teams battle and battle. You get to within 10, but you can't get over that hump. 
Yeah, and, and this Pittsburgh team, they do a good job of taking care of the basketball. You're not going to take the ball from the field, nor are you going to make him play any faster than what he wants to play, so that's going to make it tough. Just a second foul on Roberts. Panthers up by 18 here at home. 8-11 remaining here in the second half. But if I'm Brian Gregory, I'm telling my team we got to operate like it's 0 0 and we got to win the last eight minutes of this game. That's a three and it rattles home. Young with 15. And for him, it's a season high. Second straight game, he's been in double figures and back to a 21 point Pittsburgh advantage. Heisman gets it low. Scott deep in the corner. They go back inside. Jump hook, good. Good big time move that time. They really like the freshman, and that's why. The Hillsman with his sixth, his season high in his freshman season is nine. Panthers will play that half court, use some clock. They've got the lead, they've got the ball. Looks like Dayton is dropping to a zone right now. Field, baseline, gets it to Young. Up and good, he'll go to the line. Sam Young was 17. He has a career high tonight. Well, you know, this game, John, is real simple. The aggressor normally wins, and Pittsburgh has been the aggressor tonight. Second foul on London Warren, and going to the line will be Sam Young. He has had knee problems. He's had back problems. He's just fine tonight with a career high, and Pittsburgh on top. Experience is an excellent teacher. And what over 45 years of experience has taught Oppenheimer Funds is the strength of a balanced approach and the effectiveness of a diversely skilled team. Valuable lessons that guide us through an ever-changing financial landscape. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. Do you remember when we learned that too much of anything isn't good? Let's apply that lesson to enjoying Guinness. Apply previously learned lessons of moderation to drinking Guinness. Brilliant! Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly. Can you picture a world where healthy habits start young and never grow old? We're taking steps to make it happen through Highmark Healthy High Five, a program that targets five critical areas in promoting lifelong healthy habits in children at home, at school, and in the community. Creating a brighter future for us all. To learn more, visit HighmarkHealthyHighFive.org. The sky is perfect blue. No cloud could spoil the view. It's a sign from above that shows that we're in love. Seven thirteen to play. The Panthers by twenty-one. Let's take a look now at a game-changing performance brought to you by Pontiac, and we have seen one from Sam Young tonight. Well, I talked earlier about he's a guy that you don't have to run plays for. And what I mean by that is he gets his points off the floor of the offense. There you see a great drive there. There you see him running the floor. He gets a layup right there. Coaches like guys that can manufacture points and you don't have to set up and run specific plays to get them open. They just get it off the floor of the game. And that's what Sam Young has done tonight. Now he has a career high 17 points. He's hit seven of 10, has four rebounds. The only thing he hasn't done very well is make free throws. He's only two out of five. Interesting, a great first half for LeVance Fields. He's not taken a shot in the second half. Yeah, but he's still, he, he, he's the aggressor. Whenever he's in there, he's always forcing the defense to collapse. He's coming off ball screen, and in the second half, he's gone to set up the other guys. But he certainly has been the catalyst tonight. Well, this guy with the ball has worked his fanny off during this game tonight. But I saw him walk back on the court. He puts up a runner, hits the deck. No foul called. 
and the ball will still belong to the Flyers. Now their coach, Brian Gregory, pleading for a foul, but he's got to be a little bit tired, Perry, because he has really done the work. Oh, oh without question, um, they they have really put him in a position where he's had to step up and try to carry his team. I think if, if they can develop somebody else to play the point and play him off the ball, I think it will help him because he really works. So he won't have to work as hard bringing the ball up and setting up other people. But he is, I mean, Pittsburgh is not giving him any easy opportunities tonight. Well, that's what you do against the best player on the other team, isn't it? You uh, make him work for everything. And let me tell you something. This Pittsburgh team knows how to wear you down <laughs> as well as any team in the country, believe me. Well, it was expected by the Flyers because Brian Gregory said, hey, we know they're going to come out and be physical as they can be to see if we want to play that kind of basketball. You know, but Brian Gregory has a greater vision than just this game. That's why you schedule Pittsburgh. That's why you schedule North Carolina. I mean, you have a vision for your program, and I think certainly with these young kids that he has, that this team has the has the ability to get to where he wants them to be, which is to be one of the best teams in the A-10 and have a national presence. So they'll play at North Carolina on New Year's Eve, and then they'll open the Atlantic 10 schedule at home against Charlotte. I'll tell you what, in that University of Dayton arena, they are tough They're to They're awful beat. tough. And there's Mr. Fields. You just said that he hasn't done much, but it's been whatever he's wanted to do tonight. You know, early in this, this half, he just wanted to set other people up, and that time he steps up and knocked down the jump shot. The fans didn't like that one, but there was a lot of contact, and you know, I think at this point the officials just really want to make sure they keep everything under control and don't want anybody to get hurt or anything. That's number four on Kendall. That's going to bring Biggs into the lineup for Pittsburgh. As Sandoval will shoot a pair at the line. That's his first point. The Biggs checks in. Kendall will sit down. Kendall departs with four points, but he did a pretty good job in the rebounding department in the second half, did Kendall? And he does a really good job. It sounds like a small thing, but he really sets really good ball screens, which allows the guards to get into the lane, and which is what Pitt feeds off of a lot in their offense. Seven rebounds tonight for Kendall. Of course, it was Gray leading the way again for Pitt. And this Pittsburgh team has played with a lot of energy tonight. You know, coming off of that game at Oklahoma State, the long trip back, short practice time. Good pass underneath the big. Good look that time by the big man, Aaron Gray. And I tell you, that, that's the thing that's going to allow him, I think, to play so well at the next level. He can really pass the basketball. You cannot double him under, under there. He has a really good basketball IQ. Strip. And back the other way comes Cook. The only guy close to him is Graves, and he just lays it in. Nine for Cook. Dayton needs a timeout right now. Biggest lead of the night. Panthers up by 25, and Dayton will take the timeout. And John, the reason I say they need a timeout, you know, this is this is December, and this Brian Gregory has done a great job of getting his team to this point. He does not want to lose them because Pittsburgh has played so well. And right now he's telling them, let's finish this thing off. Let's be solid with what we do. Let's execute. And I think that that's extremely important moving forward. And some history being made in NCAA basketball tonight because Bobby Knight has joined Dean Smith. 879. That's a bunch, huh? <laughs> Um, that's a lot of games, just yeah. not just counting wins. Yeah, don't, don't worry about the wins. <laughs> that many games. Our right, congratulations. It's a 25-point lead. Just over five minutes to play here. You, you know, everybody has a Bobby Knight story. When I was at Tulane, my best player got hurt in the NIT there and broke his leg. And Bobby Knight gave us his personal car to make sure we took him to the hospital and made his manager stay with us all night to make sure he got the best medical care. So, you know, a lot of things are said, but he has really helped a lot of people along the way. On the way in, the foul is called. It'll be a one and one. Number two on Antonio Graves. A chance at the line. They get the clock stopped, maybe get a couple points back. Graves goes to the bench, and Ronald Ramon will return for Jamie Dixon. Now Fields sits down. 
You've got Cook, you've got Benjamin, you've got Biggs, you've got Gray out there along with Ramon right now for the Panthers. That's what I was talking about. They can put a lot of different combinations on the court. But they're all good players. That's what they have in common. And uh, certainly this is a fine team. They open Big East play, you know, at Syracuse, and that's going to be a heck of a game for Syracuse. Jim Beheim has another fine basketball team going on up there right now. So that's going to be a really, really important game for Pittsburgh. And their final game of this year will be a week from now, Saturday. There's the run out by Benjamin and the jam and the foul. Benjamin did not like the foul at all. No. But he's got to play with that. That's his first basket, so all nine that have played for Pitt have scored. Yeah. When you explode to the basket like that, you got to protect yourself. You got to play for the contact. And there was plenty on that play. Completes the three point play. So Benjamin gets in the board. Panthers have their biggest lead of the evening. Baseline drive into the hands of Gray. It was an air ball. Aaron Gray picks up the loose ball. Ramon matched up now. As they get it to Biggs along the baseline. Ramon's quick three comes up short. Biggs scrambles for the offensive rebound. Gray piles in to pick up a held ball and keep it at this end of the court. Yeah, good hustle by Pittsburgh. You know, one of the things, you know, for Dayton, when they go back and look at this tape or this game, and although it's gotten out of hand right now, early in the game, defensively, Pittsburgh stepped up and were, they were the aggressor. They didn't allow any penetration. They didn't allow the ball to go into the low post and really had Dayton playing perimeter basketball. And that's what kind of put them in the soup. And then Fields was very aggressive on the offensive end and created a lot of scoring opportunities by his penetration. Now, yeah. Off the bench now come Doyle Hudson. He's a senior from the Bahamas and Gilbert Brown, a freshman. They thought about redshirting Gilbert Brown. Well, listen to this stat, Perry. Gray has 16 rebounds. The entire Dayton team has 17 rebounds. And, and that goes to the point of being the aggressor. You have to be the aggressor when, when, when you're on the road. Because if you don't and you let the home team get some momentum, then it, it, it's really going to take you out of what you want to do, and you really don't have much of a chance. The Panthers are up by 28. And some bumping between Hudson and Hillsman. You know, that guy right there, Brian Gregg, is, is, going, is a heck of a coach now. Yeah, and, he, and he's still pleading his case for his team. But his team is down by 28 with 3.54 to go. Maybe a little too late for conversation. The Panthers have run out on Dayton. If you're looking to ramp up your ride, get ready. Advance Auto Parts has a special order center just for you. You're a one-of-a-kind, one-stop shop for everything you could ever want in parts and performance accessories. Everything from lift kits to cool custom accessories is ready for direct-to-your-door delivery or convenient in-store pickup. When you want the most complete selection of parts and accessories, the only place to go is the Special Order Center in Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. Sick of slow? Sign up for Comcast High Speed Internet for just $24.99 a month for three months. At ridiculously quick speeds, it's way faster than DSL and dial-up. And now with Power Boost, your fast connection is even faster. Just call 1-800-COMCAST. Comcast High Speed Internet with Power Boost. It's Comcastic. When you don't know what the weather is going to do, it's good to know what your car can do. The Audi Quattro Winter Event. Get exceptional values on select Audi models. Each available with race-proven and weather-proven Quattro all-wheel drive. The all-new Audi Q7. The SUV from the creator of Quattro. Visit Swigley Audi at the Swigley Bridge or on the web at swigleycars.com.
Tonight's Big East game has been brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. And by Select Sector Spiders. Start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-BMX. We're back and ready for the final 354. The game really fairy that I think Pittsburgh has dominated a little more than maybe you or I expected today. Uh oh, without question. I, you got to give Pittsburgh a lot of credit. I mean, they've come out with a lot of energy. I did not know what type of energy level they were going to have. I knew they were going to be deep, but I mean, everybody that's played has come out and really played hard, made a tremendous contribution. And most of the regulars are on the bench right now. There's no better Christmas present than a win right before Christmas. I'm telling you, that's the only way you can, uh, as a coach, you can have a good Christmas day. Well, you take a game on the road at Wisconsin right after finals week <laughs> when you really have distractions as far as your team is concerned. That's taking a huge chunk out. And then to go play Oklahoma State in Oklahoma City. Yeah, and people say, why do you go up to Buffalo? Why do you go to Auburn? Well, it really helps your RPI because it almost doubles when you play on the road and get road wins. Nice drive by Johnson. Can't finish, though, and the rebound and a foul from behind will go on Johnson. That's number four on Marcus Johnson. That was a good-looking drive that time. He was a good young freshman. Just actually got so high, he, he overshot the basket. And put Keith Benjamin to the foul line. And on the other hand, in the Gregory household, Christmas may, may not be quite as cheery because he'll be replaying this one and looking at game tapes and everything like that. So I've been on both sides of that, John. Missed the front end of the one and one, tipped away and out of bounds, and it belongs to the Flyers of Dayton. Fourth year for him and a belated happy birthday. Turned 40 years of age just a week ago yesterday. So, Brian, welcome to the club. There's a large membership there ahead of you. Yes, it is. <laughs> Not much playing time for this guy. The turnaround won't go. That's Desmond Adediji, who's a big kid. 6'9", almost 300-pound sophomore. That three is short, and the rebound on the weak side is taken away by London Mora. He will race to the other end and score. Good-looking move that time. Again, pushing the ball. That's something that Dayton has not been able to do, get a lot of easy opportunities at baskets. And right now, Jamie's telling his team to run some motion, just turn it over. Three-pointer, Ramon, good. That's eight for Ronald, his second three, and he has a terrific percentage three-point shooter at 46%. 80-53. Stafford is going to check in for Dayton. He's gone deeper than normal. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with, with, with fatigue. Well, how is this guy still out here? <laughs> Robert. Uh, he I must mean, not like to come out of game. I, I would have thought he would have been out by now. Benjamin dribbles it out of bounds. 13 turnovers. Back into the lineup. I think he's coming out now. They heard you, John. <laughs> I tell you what, I give this kid a, a tip of the cap because he has played his heart out tonight. He will finish his night with 21 points. He made five three pointers and he kept him in the ball game the first 10 minutes. Believe me, he earned every one of those points. He did not have an easy opportunity all night. Johnson from long range. Here's Ramon. Three-point line drive shot is good by Gilbert Brown. Those are his first points in collegiate basketball. His third game that the freshman from Harrisburg has played on and his first field goal. The 29-point lead. I tell you, this Pittsburgh team has answered a lot of questions tonight. You know, this, 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 was, this was a tough basketball game. To play a team that was hot after you come in off the road, kids thinking about the holidays, there's a lot of distractions, but they buckled down and they have really locked in and played a heck of a game. And again, you got to give Jamie Dixon a lot of credit for, yep. for the way he's developed this team and built this program. Now they're going to use everybody. 11 guys have played, 11 guys have scored. 
And we're going to get two more now because Jeff Rift, a freshman from New Jersey, will come on along with Maurice Poland, a junior from Philadelphia. The only other player on the squad is Austin Wallace, a freshman from the Bronx, and they plan to redshirt him. Yeah. Not a real good-looking stroke, is no. it? Well, that's one of the reasons he's 8 for 18 shooting free throws. But it was touched last by Pitt. Minute 16 to go. Panthers comfortably in front, 82 to 53. Well, it was surprising. This is the first time these two teams have played Ever. each other. Yeah. It is, it is, if you sit and think about it, all the great basketball history between the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Dayton, and this is the first time they have ever played. Not that the Flyers haven't been to Pittsburgh a few times, they just never played yeah. the Panthers. Johnson at the foul line. Where he is three out of four so far. Eight points for the freshman from Cleveland. Very athletic. You know, he really is. He's very athletic, but he, he really he knows how to play. You know, and uh, you can watch his movements and all. He's going to be a really fine player. Well, he came right out of the box, scored 23 points in the first game. So that was a pretty good start to your college career right that's, there. That's not bad. Right, risk on the drive. Has that one blocked. Back the other way. Johnson intercepted by Ramon. They want risk to score big time. And <laughs> it's a knocked out of bounds. He's trying, I'll He's say that. Jeff. <laughs> Risk. You always have that one guy that works hard in practice, and when he gets in the game, everybody roots for him, and the whole team tries to set him up to get an open shot. No open shot there as he's covered by Matt Hogan. He's not giving up, no. though, though, John. <laughs> right into the hands. Poland gets his first points of the season. And the Panthers are up by 30. 12 players have scored. Oh, the pass is too far. Jeff couldn't get to it. 12 of the 13 that have played have scored. Warren a try, and that's rejected by Maurice Poland. They're having a little Christmas party tonight. Yeah, they have a little fun in here. I tell you, this, this was a nice crowd in here tonight. I mean, they came ready to pull for these Panthers and get them back on the winning track. That's Hogan with it outside. Risk on him. Final 15 seconds. Stafford for two. Bends off. The rebound belongs to the Panthers. Ripped out of there nicely by Poland. Risk. Not quite. <laughs> At the buzzer. 84-54. Eighty-four, fifty-four. The Panthers led by a huge first half from Levance Field. He had 14 points off the bench. It was Sam Young, and at the other side, Brian Roberts did all that he could, but it wasn't enough as the Panthers won it by 30. No, it wasn't. A great st uh, statement by Pittsburgh. They, they really stepped up with their defense and just a tremendous job. Final score, Pittsburgh 84-54 for Perry Clark and our entire Big East crew here in Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very Merry Christmas and a great holiday season. Good night, everyone. The speed. The, speed. the, power. the power. The power. Get the gift of a Penn's double shot. Game one has hit the kid, hoping the holidays give him and the Pens a big win over their divisional rival Devils. Then Crosby and Malkin head back home to open up game two with yet another tough battle with the Thrashers. All naughty and no nice. Don't miss out on a Pens double shot. Game start Tuesday on FSN Pittsburgh. It's the nightly highlight show that can't be missed. The FSN final score. Hill alone, he scores! What a shot! Check out the only national show that gives you nothing but wall-to-wall -wall highlights. Yeah, baby! No fluff, no filler, just all the action that's lighting up the sports world from coast to coast. The FSN final score, presented by DirecTV. 
No one covers the Panthers like FSN Pittsburgh. Panthers Weekly takes you onto the hardwood and inside the action of the men's basketball team. Everybody on campus is pretty excited about it. Be a part of this historic season as Pitt fights their way to the madness in March. Plus, we're in the gym, hitting the field, and on the mats, making sure you get the best Panthers coverage around. This is the show built for Pitt fans. Panthers Weekly, Mondays on FSN Pittsburgh, presented by Barrel Automotive. This week on FSN's Pro Football Preview. Jay Glazer, Tim Brown, Jason Seahorn, and Eddie George break down the NFL's biggest stories with in-depth interviews and expert analysis. They've yet to find a consistent running game. It all starts with that defense. It's the weekly preview show that can't be missed. FSN Pro Football Preview, tonight on FSN. Now, Pittsburgh Sports Tonight, presented by Bush Light. Well, hello and welcome to this Pitt post-game and holiday edition of Bush Light Pittsburgh Sports Tonight. I'm Trina Kuznarek. Joining me in studio to break down the Panthers' huge win over Dayton is our basketball analyst, Curtis Aiken. Now, most of the next half hour is going to be spent on the Panthers, but we also have Steeler, Penguin, and Pirate news for you. But, of course, we start right back at the people. Pitt back at home hosting the Flyers from Dayton after two tough losses on the road. Three minutes in, Dayton's Nick Stafford loses the handle. Levance Field steals the loose ball, lays it in. Pitt up by seven early. A few minutes later, this is exactly what you want to see. Mike Cook lobs it inside to Aaron Gray for the easy jam. 11-5 Pitt lead. Trinity, that's one of the things that the Pitt Panthers do so well. They screen Aaron Gray on a block, and he can finish it as well as anyone in the country. Mike Good, Mike. Cook does a good job of lobbing the ball over the top. They made the adjustment the second half, but they weren't able to stop the Panthers at, overall. All right, Fields here deciding to drive it to the basket, takes it there, plus one, and this is when Pitt really begins to take over. In transi transition, Fields with a long pass ahead to Cook again, gets the bucket and one, Pitt up by nine, now 27-18. All right, later still in the first half, Pitt up 15 now. Sam Young spins in the lane, gets the spot to fall, Despite being fouled, the 10th point of the half break game for Sam Young. It was. He had some early injuries, but obviously he's back healthy. Nice move to the basket. Give him an extra point for degree of difficulty. Why don't you? <laughs> you, give him a, you give him a 10, right? All right. Pit up 15 at the half. Second half now. The rebound off a three-pointer goes to Antonio Graves. Hits Cook in mid-stride for the dunk. 20-point pit lead now again in transition. Ronald Ramon up to Keith Benjamin. Fakes the shot. Hits Sam Young wide open for another slam. Home all right, eight-minute mark more. Sam Young, Mike Cook, cross-court to Young for the three. He rattles it home. A career-high 18 points for Young. Now off the inbound. Aaron Gray. Haven't heard his name too much in the highlights, but getting it done here. Pushes it up court to Keith Benjamin. Jam foul. Not happy about that foul, but Pitt wins easily. 84 to 54. All right. Our Pitt basketball analyst Curtis Aiken is in studio and Wow, what a different pit team we saw today than the one that lost to both Wisconsin and Oklahoma State. What was the biggest difference? Well, first of all, I think they made a statement today. This team certainly wasn't as good as uh, Wisconsin, nor Oklahoma State for that matter, but to beat a pretty good team by 30 points certainly makes a statement. But I think the biggest difference today was they came out and played much more aggressive. They got off to a slow start as they've been doing the last few, few games or so, but I think they started to turn it up and they played much more aggressive on a defensive end and got everyone involved, as you saw, offensively. And how about LeVance Field? 16 points today, running the court very, very well. Well, you can't say enough about LeVance Field. I mean, tonight he decided he's going to score the basketball, and he did it with regularity. He looked for a shot on the perimeter, which in the few games in the past, he was looking to pass the ball a lot. But I thought today was much more aggressive offensively. He was looking for a shot on the perimeter, as you see him knocking down the trade there. But he also got in the lane and created for his teammates as well. And he's a pretty good three-point shooter. He was perfect on the night. Sam Young. What a night for this kid, a career-high 18 points. Well, it certainly was a, a come-out game for Sam Young. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast that he was having some troubles with some injuries, but he seems to be 100% now, the most athletic kid on the court, bar none. He's starting to play with a great deal of confidence, and at a time where I think LeVon Kendall may have lost a little bit of confidence, cause, so right now they really need Sam Young to step up, and he's doing it in a big way. Now, I know you really like Sam Young. What is it about his game that really sticks out to you and that you think is going to make him such a good player? Well, I 
think that you know, his ability to do the, the number one and most important thing, and, and that is to work hard. I have an opportunity, as you know, Trinity, to go see these kids practice, and I just love his work ethic. I mean, he doesn't say anything, just goes out and he practices and practices. Coach tells him to do something, and he does it. And as a result of that, you know, the fruit of his labors is starting to show on the court. It's very difficult to, to display your talents when you're hurt. He's 100% now, and he's playing, he's playing healthy, and now you're starting to see a different Sam Young. He started, you started to see what he's capable of doing, the Oklahoma State game. I thought he was really the only bright point, although Pitt, you know, lost in overtime on a road, which is a tough game. But I thought Sam Young was the guy that kept him in that ball game, and I expect big things out of him this year. All right, tonight's Bush Light web poll question is about Pitt's schedule. Will their difficult schedule help them or hurt them come tournament time? You can log on to FoxSports.com keyword Pittsburgh to vote and Curtis what do you think you kind of take a look at what their schedule has been they, they had a close game at on the road against Buffalo they lost at Wisconsin they lost at Oklahoma State it was it still though despite those two two losses to ranked team t ranked teams do you still like the way their schedule was set up and do you think it's going to help them in the long run I really do the only poor loss was obviously was the Wisconsin game they go to Wisconsin and t they lost by 15 points but that wasn't really indicative of the, uh, of the game. I mean, I thought that they were outplayed on both ends of the court. Uh, obviously, you know, they couldn't stop the big guy there as you see him looking on the perimeter inside. Uh, but I, I really believe that Pitt's schedule is going to help them long term. You know, they, they played on the road against the Wisconsin team. They played at Oklahoma State. I thought they played a much better game at Oklahoma State, only lost by one, well, a few points in overtime. But I think, you know, when it, when it comes to election time, that's going to be taken in consideration and you want to go out and play these tough games because you want to be battle tested. You want to be battle tested as well as well as battle ready. And if you're playing against these tough teams this early, when it comes selection time, they're going to take that in consideration. And also you're going to be ready for NCAA tournament play. And Big East play and, you know, one or two bad losses every now and again. Never hurt anyone. They always say you can learn from them. All right, coming up, the Steelers. Uh, some real problems with the Ravens earlier this season. Now a rookie has to step in to protect Big Ben. All right, we're going to have much more with Curtis. Plus, we're going to talk about where the Panthers stand nationally and show some highlights of the top teams in the country. And we're going to give you an update on the official push to get the Pens a brand new arena right here in Pittsburgh. Stay with us on Pittsburgh Sports Tonight. Now, Comcast viewers can enjoy FSN Pittsburgh's entire library of Under the Lights presentations with Comcast On Demand. The shows are available under the Your Town, then Local Sports folders and FSN Fox Sports. Check it out today with Comcast On Demand. Bright GMC Red Tag Clearance. GMC Envoy 500 Under Invoice. Every GMC Sierra truck clearly marked Under Invoice. And GMC Canyon 1000 Under Invoice. Plus 0% for 72 months. How you get to work isn't nearly as important as how you get away from it. 